Okay, so this is the last section on the chapter. Good morning, my girl. <laughs> this is the last section of the chapter on parallelograms and quadrilaterals. So we've been talking about overall a lot of different types of shapes, but all of them have had in common that they're parallelograms. So a parallelogram has how many sides? Four. Four. And the opposite sides are? Equal. Opposite sides are equal, and they are also parallel. parallel. That's why it's called a parallelogram, which means that the opposite sides would never do what? They would never cross, yeah. They're never going to or intersect each other. Okay, so we've got this giant circle where we have parallelograms, and that's our large. So that was a, well, that was almost good. All right, so parallelograms. And then within parallelograms, what do we have? What else do we talk about? Okay, so we have rhombuses. I'm going to make that over here. This is like a rhombus. It does look like an egg. All right, what about this? What else do we have? All right, so we have rectangles. And inside the rectangle circle is squares. All right, why do I draw them like this? What's this picture represent? All squares are rectangles. Yeah, it's kind of like the, how you do like whole numbers, natural numbers. All right, so all squares are rectangles. All rectangles are parallelograms. And all rhombuses are also parallelograms. Are rhombuses rectangles? No? Okay. All right. So then what we're going to talk about today is like what lives out here. All right? So if this whole picture, if this whole picture is quadrilaterals, that means this is all shapes with how many sides? Four. Four, right? So these are all quadrilaterals. And what we're going to talk about today? Trapezoids. Yep. Kites and trapezoids. Kites and trapezoids are not parallelograms, which means that their opposite sides are not parallel. So there are, when we said these were parallelograms, that meant all the stuff that was true about parallelograms was true about all of these things. It's not true about kites and trapezoids. So all the like, theorems and stuff that we've been talking about don't work for kites and trapezoids. They just work for these parallelograms. OK, so a kite kind of looks like, if you were to describe this, what shape would you describe this as? A kite, yes. OK, but it, it kind of looks like a diamond, right? So more often than not, people call these diamonds. All right, it's technically called a kite. It's a quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So that means that the consecutive ones are the ones that are right next to each other, and those are congruent. So for instance, in this one, AB is congruent to AD, and BC is congruent to DC. So how is this different than a parallelogram? All sides aren't equal, that's true. But in a parallelogram, which sides were congruent? Opposite sides, that's not true here. All right, also, opposite sides in this are not what? Parallel. They're not parallel. Because if we kept going with AB, and if you kept going with DC, ultimately what would happen? They would cross each other at some point. So they're not parallel to each other. So that's kite A, B, C, D. There are some things that are true about kites. So some of the things that are true are their consecutive sides are congruent, and the diagonals are what? Perpendicular, Perpendicular which means that they do what? They make, they make a 90 degree angle. So if I called this x, give me the name of one of the 90 degree angles. A, x, b. OK, a, x, b, b, x, c, a, x, d, and? CXD, all of those have in common the same what? X, X is their vertex, they're right? So they're all, the vertex for all of them is the same, and they're perpendicular because they make right angles in here. All right, if a quadrilateral is the kite, then exactly one pair of the opposite angles are congruent. So in this case, if BD, if B is congruent to D, then A and C cannot be congruent. All right, so only one of the opposite pairs is congruent. So if B is congruent to D, then A and C cannot be congruent, and vice versa. All right, if A were congruent to C, what can you tell me about B and D? They're not congruent. All right, so these are the two things about kites that you want to know. Okay, so in kite EFGH, FEJ is 25. So FEJ is 25. And FGJ is 57. Okay. 
If I want to find GFJ, how would I do it? If I want to find this one, how would I do it? I'm going to draw this a little bit bigger. Okay. Good. That one has to be 90. So if this is 57. <laughs> 33. It has to be 33 because this makes a what? A 90 degree angle and this is a triangle. So then this would need to be 33 degrees. Because these two have to add up to what? 90, so that all together they add up to 180. All right, what about JFE, which is right here? Same thing, except this one is 25. So 90 minus 25 is? 90 minus 25. 65, because you already know this one's 90. So 90 plus... 25. I could, I could add and subtract from 180, or you can just say that you know these two have to add up to 90 because this one is 90. So then this one has to be what? 65. Okay, because you can say 90 plus 25 is 115, and then 180 minus 115 is, is 65. All right, and then GHE, which is right here, this whole thing. Oops. Oh, no. I should have. All right, GHE is this whole one right here. <laughs> what? Okay, so the opposite ones are congruent? Okay, so opposite ones are congruent. How do I know that these two aren't congruent? They already are different. They're already different, so they can't be congruent. So if this is 65 and this is 33, how would I find this whole thing? Uh, Add them together. So 65 plus 33. 98. 98. So this would be 98 degrees. So that whole thing is 98 degrees. The whole thing is 98 degrees. Okay, go do these six. YouTube. <laughs> All right. So, good afternoon. If DA is 325, what's AB? DA is 325. Good. All right. <clears throat> Could you find AC? Yes. Okay. AC is the diagonal. Could you find AC? I don't think you have enough information to do it. What if this were a right angle? Could you then? Yeah. Yes, you could if it were a right angle. Then you could. Yes, good. Okay. If it were a right angle, then you could do the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. All right. Okay, so trapezoids. Trapezoids are quadrilaterals with one pair of parallel sides. In this case, the blue sides are parallel, and the two opposite sides are called the legs. So the legs are the ones that are not parallel. So that means that the parallel sides are called the base, which typically, where would a base be? The base would be on the bottom. However, with a trapezoid, they're on the top and bottom. Or if this were a trapezoid, which ones would be parallel here? The two sides. So in this case, the bases are on the sides. So don't get tied to the fact that the base has to be on the bottom. In a trapezoid, the base just means that it's one of the two opposite sides. Or I'm sorry, parallel sides. So that means that the base angles are whichever ones touch the two. Like these are B and C are co-base angles. They're angles on the same base. All right? The non-parallel sides are called legs. So again, those are usually on the left and right. But in this picture that I drew right here, it would be on the bottom and the top. That right there? No, but that one? This, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't it be? Typically, they have to be this. Typically, you have seen them and they are the same. They do not have to be. All right, they could be totally different. 
We're going to talk for the most part, the ones we're looking at, we're going to want them to be the same, and we'll talk about those. It's a specific kind of trapezoid. All right, so here are the theorems that we have about trapezoids. So again, an isosceles trapezoid, so this is what Charlize was talking about. Isosceles trapezoids are ones that look like this, which is the typical trapezoid that you've seen, right, Charlize, where the opposite sides are equal. Why is it called a an isosceles? Two sides are the same. So the legs in this isosceles trapezoid are congruent. The bases are BC and AD because those are parallel. The eggs are the eggs. The legs are AB and CD because those are our non-parallel sides. If a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is congruent. So BC are congruent because it's an isosceles trapezoid. AD are congruent because it's an isosceles trapezoid. Then that in reverse, if a trapezoid has a pair of congruent base angles, then it's also isosceles. So if you know that A and D are equal, then you can also tell me that AB and CD are equal because it's an isosceles trapezoid. And last but not least, if a trapezoid is isosceles and only if and only if its diagonals are congruent. All right, so if AC is congruent to BD, then that makes it an isosceles trapezoid. And again, what does isosceles mean? Two equal sides. Okay, so find the measure of angle Y. <clears throat> How would you find the measure of angle Y here? Is this an isosceles trapezoid? No. Yes. yes. What are my bases? X, Y, and W, Z. So which angles are congruent? So W, Z is congruent, and then X is congruent to Y. All right, so if W is 117, what's Z? And then what do you think these two do? Supplementary. So then what do you do? Subtract it from 180. Good. Which would be what? 63 degrees. And if y is 63 degrees, what is x? x is 63 degrees. All right. <clears throat> if r, go ahead. Equal. That are consecutive, that are, that are supplementary. Yep. Do you know why? Why are these supplementary? What's 360? The full, the full trapezoid is 360. How do you figure out what it all adds up to? How do you figure out what all the angles add up to in an, any shape? N minus 2 times 180. So you would get 360. And if you know this is equal to this, and these are equal to these, then you, then you can work backwards kind of from there. Or you can just know that these have to be 180. All right? Okay. So if RT is 24.1 and QP is 9.6, where are my bases here? ST and RQ. All right, so if these are my bases, then that means RQ and ST are my bases. Is this an isosceles trapezoid? Yes. So what does that tell you about RS and QT? They're the same. So if RT is 24.1, then what does that tell you about SQ? That also has to be 24.1. All right, QP then, if I'm looking at QP is 9.6, how could I figure out PS? Good, 24.1 minus 9.6. What is it? So 14.5? Okay, so PS is equal to 14.5. Because you know that in an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals have to do what? They have to be what? Be the same. Congruent, they have to be the same. Is it like one third? It's not like, not like a centroid, no. It looks like it in that one, but it's not quite. Okay, try these. Yeah, try these. What?